Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Wednesday a catch up video. In today's video, I'm going to put some more of the lathe tutorial series on. And this time, it's a part of the lathe that lives sort of in the cupboard under the lathe and very, very rarely gets used. And it's the fixed steady. Uh, I'll show a little bit about that, how to set it up, how to use it. It is a really handy bit of kit, uh, invaluable for machining long thin shafts. I had Bob at the garage uh, two or three nights ago. And I put a video on last night, uh, Bob stripped down a uh, completely seized uh, DTI gauge. He's going to take it away, get it all cleaned up and bring it back and put it all back together again, which will be really interesting. Bob's a, a nice guy, he's got a vast amount of knowledge. Uh, I still can't believe how he can play with 10 beer balls with hands that are <laughs> twice the size of mine. Anyway, he does. On about Bob, I was at Mick's house the other day, and Mick gave us this. It's a... A plaque, uh, Border Vintage Agricultural Association, 2004, 27th Annual Rally. I'll show a close-up of that. If anybody wants this plaque, like if, if you're part of the society or you want it, all you want to do is send me an email. That's my email, email address up there. And it's basically going to be first come, first served. I'll post it off completely free of charge for somebody that actually really wants it. Right, that's enough talk. I think we'll have a, a go there and we'll see exactly what we're going to do with this fixed steady. Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part 12 in a series of short videos all about the metal turner lathe. In this week's episode, or this week's instalment, I'm going to be talking about, discussing and demonstrating the fixed lathe steady. This is the fixed steady that came with my Harrison 140 lathe. They're normally to be found in a cupboard under the lathe, next to a four-jaw chuck in a face plate, slowly rusting away. This one's been used, but it hasn't been used very much. The fixed steady is used to support long bits of material on the tail end of the lathe. I've got a piece of bar here and if I wanted to machine that end of the bar and it won't go through the headstock on the lathe because it's too big, put it in a chuck like that. Now if I was to try and face this end of the bar, it will be wobbling and flexing. I wouldn't be able to get a very good finish, it wouldn't work at all. It hasn't got a centre drill mark in, so I can't just put a, a centre into it. This is where we use the fixed steady to support that end of the bar. The fixed steady fits onto the lathe bed using that V and that flat, exactly the same as the tail stock does. And it's also got a clamping piece that goes underneath. And it's got a nut on top that tightens down and that's what clamps it onto the lathe bed. I'm going to set the steady up on this end of the bar because the bar is fairly parallel to it's a decent bit of bar. You must make sure that the lathe bed's clean where the steady sits down and obviously the base of the steady is clean as well. So that simply goes on there like that, you can see what fits on the V of the bed and lies on the flat. And this clamping piece goes on from underneath. It's a little bit of a pain in yours to put on because that doesn't actually fit down through there. So you've got to lift it up from underneath, which is quite a strange setup, but anyway, that's the way it is. Right, so if you have under here, somehow. Push that up. This is not a particularly good design, but I'm sure it'll work once it's in there. Right, right and there's a nut there that clamps it in position. Right, that's a nut that clamps it in position. I want it up close to the chuck. As close as we can get. 
clamp this up. Right, so that's securely mounted on the bed. I'm going to put a clock on this bar and see how true it's running. This three jaw chuck is normally pretty good. Right, that's kind of in two or three thou, which is near enough for a piece of bar that is going to be machined. On the steady, that's three points. These points are adjustable, and on the end, as a little plastic bush or a little plastic pad. Sometimes these are bronze. Sometimes are roller bearings. These ones are a simple little plastic pad. So all you do is you screw that adjuster in until that touches, just touches, a little bit of weight on. Same with this one. You feel it just touching, just nice. You can actually hear it. You adjust those until they're just touching. That's two little bolts in here that lock them up. Man, you bastard. Right, so they're nipped up. The top end comes over and that is clamped down. There's a clamping bolt that holds that down. And the top one, which is just a plain brass one in this particular case, That goes down until you can feel it and hear it just rubbing. You don't need a great lot of pressure on it. Right, so we can basically lock that one up like that. Right, now that the steady is set at this end in the bar, it's the same down that end. Just a simple case of loosening this off. We'll open up the steady again. Loosen the clamp bolt or the clamp nut. We can move it steady down the bed of the lathe once again, making sure that the weirs are nice and clean. So that simply slides down there like that. And it's going to support this end of the material while we machine it. We tighten up the nut, close it up. Lock that up. And that bar is held nicely in there. A little bit of grease on there just to help lubricate the pads. Right, so we've got it all set up, all clamped down, a little bit of lubricant on. Now we can go ahead and do the machine operation on the other end. All you want to do is machine this flat and centre drill it. Then we can get a tailstock live centre in and machine at the end of the bar. If we weren't able to get the tailstock centre in because the layer's not long enough, we could move this down the bed a little bit and do the machine work on the end of there. get the tool I would normally use to face the end of the bar because I'm right solid up against the tail stock but this will this will do the job for us. Right, I've changed the tool for a left hand leg tool mounted on the rear of the tool post. And so successfully managed to 
pierce that. So we could machine the end of the board down if we had to, but putting a lime centre in there is definitely the way to go. If we need the machine we are in, it's a simple matter of turning the bar around because it's already set up. Right, so to turn it over, it's a simple case of looting off that part of the steady, lifting out the road, loosen off the chuck, turn it over. Clamp that down again, and that's got a real nice hold. A little bit of lubricant. And then we can machine that end, just the same. on a big long years where you could be 10 or 20 feet away from the chuck you have duplicate controls on the lathe carriage to start stop and reverse the lathe often on steadies that use rollers instead of contact tips like that they'll put a sheet of cardboard across there to stop any chips going in between the bearing and the workpiece because it'll, it'll ruin it I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it and more so I hope you managed to pick up something from it if there's anything specifically you want us to cover, just send us an email. That's my email up there. I've had quite a few requests and I've got a good list and there's a vast amount of topics to cover on a metal working list. Once again, just time to see it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Subscribing, you fucking belly end. <coughs> Once again, just time to see it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the well wishes. Let us emails will come in has made a massive difference and it really does lift me spirits. Don't forget, I'll be at Flupera Steam Rally at Grange of Hassans on Saturday and Sunday coming. If you're there, go over, say hello, be really good to meet you. Anyway, thanks for watching.